What's going on, everybody? We are back in the garage, hanging out, doing some stuff, getting some things done. Not really, but I'm coming at you with another video. I thought this one would be a fun one to make because um, I have been asked a couple of questions um, and I've come to learn that in the industry, TIG welding doesn't seem to be um, a very uh, common thing you run across with people who are welders. A lot of people can MIG weld. A lot of people can stick weld. Um, there are a lot of people out there that are great TIG welders um, and uh, everything like that, but it just seems like it's one of those skills that everyone's just like, man, I really wanna learn how to TIG weld. Um, I have a machine that's capable of TIG welding, but um, I'm just struggling with getting the right uh, settings, etc. I'm, I'm struggling with TIG welding. I'm not getting it. Uh, it's hard for me. So I'm kind of focusing this video on that. Uh, this is a my recommendation for five things um, or five uh, categories of things that every beginning TIG welder should have. Um, and I'm going to start this off uh, relatively easy. We're going to get straight into it. And number one is going to be you want to be comfortable in your PPE. So we're going to go over that. Everyone by now should know what PPE means. It is your personal protective equipment. Um, so with TIG welding uh, is super important. Obviously, I'm making this video assuming you already have a machine, you already got some filler wire, you already got a hood, you're ready to weld, um, you're just struggling with getting that perfect TIG weld. Now, I am no, and by no means, I am no professional TIG welder. I'm a very mediocre TIG welder at that. <laughs> um, I, I try and train and train myself to get better um, all the time. Uh, I'm a much better MIG welder than I am a TIG welder. That is just because I started on MIG welding um, in structural steel. That's all I did was MIG welding. I did very little TIG welding. Um, I did a lot of stick welding. Uh, but uh, TIG welding, you do a lot of it in the automotive uh, world. And um, I do do it a lot here in the garage. But with that being said, uh, and just basically pointing out the fact that I am no professional TIG welder, these are just my personal opinions on what made it easier for me to progress uh, in my TIG welding journey. So, PPE. Uh, being comfortable, <laughs> being comfortable uh, is probably the most important thing in welding. Um, I was listening to a podcast the other day with a guy that I um, very much look up to. Um, it's Hourglass Ingenuity on Instagram, um, Brad. He was on a po podcast with uh, the Art Junkies podcast. Uh, and he said that being comfortable in welding, um, I believe he said it was 90% um, of how to get a good uh, solid weld done. So when I heard that, I was like, man, you are 1000% right. I personally agree with that. A lot of people don't. Um, there are tons of times uh, in the industry where you're going to have to weld completely out of position, upside down, shooting flames up your shirt and all kinds of nasty stuff. But if you can, being comfortable is numero uno. Try to be comfortable. So with that being said, I get into some uh, PPE equipment. Being comfortable also comes down to the types of gloves you wear. Get good gloves. Um, my recommendation to you, if you don't have a set of good gloves, and let's just say you're using a pair of MIG gloves to take well, that is not a bad thing, um, but there are specialized TIG gloves for a reason. Um, they are a thinner material. And my recommendation, like I was going to say, is go into your local weld shop or your gas supply or your weld supply shop um, and go try on some gloves before you order them over the internet. The reason why I say this is you can order MIG gloves and basically get in the ballpark and you'll be all right, or like stick gloves and you'll be all right. Um, it's not that big of a deal if your MIG or, or your stick gloves are oversized, but for me, uh, the reason why I say go try them on is because I personally think you will progress a little bit easier when, fill, when uh, feeding your filler wire when you have a set of gloves that fit nice and form to your hand. Now, these are tight on my hand, but they have gone through a couple of heat cycles, so they look a bit tighter than they really are. Um, when you go through a heat cycle, they will shrink up. So you could get maybe something that's a little bit oversized that's gonna shrink up over time, um, but I like them when they fit nice and tight. Like you can see around my fingers here, they're pretty tight. There's no baggy extra material or anything like that. The reason why is because 
when you are feeding your filler wire, this is the way that I feed my filler wire between my middle finger and my ring finger. I push my fingers out just like that and I feed my fingers back in, push my fingers out, feed my fingers back in. And you can do this in front of the TV if you're trying to learn how to do this. But um, when you have thin gloves like this, uh, it is easier for you to feel the wire in your hand, which is extremely important, especially when you are learning how to feed filler wire by hand. Now, um, this seems to be one of those sticking points for the old heads out there that just basically won't move on with the world. And they basically say that if you can't feed filler wire with your hand, you're a loser, which is not true, not at all. But if you are trying to learn how to feed filler by hand, it makes it a ton easier if you have gloves that fit your fingers. So go try on your gloves, go get gloves that fit nice and tight on your hand so that way you can feel that wire in your hand you can choke up on the torch and not have anything in your way or impeding your movement, et cetera, et cetera. It's also good to have the long gauntlet type gloves like this. Um, so that way you can, sorry, hang on. So that way you guys can lean up against something or even maybe rest your hand on the part. And this just gives you a little bit of added protection to not burn yourself. Now, speaking of added protection on leaning on stuff, you don't need these, but they are a great tool. When you're using, uh, uh, when you're using your TIG welder, you you can see. I'm sure you guys have noticed that while you're using it, the part is super hot and it's radiating heat off of the arc. Um, so a good way to protect yourself from that is these are commonly re uh, referred to as TIG fingers. Um, you can rest on your part or basically on your weld table with these TIG fingers over your gloves and it gives you that added layer of protection to protect you from any crazy heat so you don't burn yourself, which is awesome. So I recommend these as well. Don't need them for starting out or anything like that, but uh, they do help, so there's that. Now, if you guys don't like my uh, sweet Michael Jackson looking gloves I've got going on here, if you guys don't like gloves like this, I do not know why I bought white, but I did. Don't buy white, buy like black or something like that. It's just much easier. Um, if you don't like gloves like this, I typically uh, don't wear these gloves either when I'm TIG welding. But what you can do is you could buy yourself a nice new set of mechanics gloves. Now mechanics gloves, you can buy these at any auto parts store. You can buy them at Home Depot, um, et cetera, et cetera. These gloves are great, super heavy duty, especially for welding. Now, you are going to heat soak into these gloves much faster than you would with uh, some leather gloves or like some purpose TIG gloves, but uh, there is a company called Torchware who's partnered up with Mechanics and they, uh, they make some badass TIG specific gloves um, made by Mechanics, um, but I use these pretty much a majority of the time when I'm TIG welding, even when I'm MIG welding sometimes, which, yeah, you could do that. I don't, I mean, I do it, but... Maybe you guys wouldn't like to do stuff like that. But anyway, um, especially when I'm already got sleeves on, like I wear a uh, flannel or um, like a button up or whatever, or a long sleeve shirt pretty much every time I TIG weld. So uh, that's, uh, that's just my thing. Uh, so if you're wearing long sleeves already, these are great for that because they will give you protection of your hands. Um, you could feel that filler wire in your fingers and you already got protection from the sleeves you're wearing on your flannel. Um, that leads me into the next thing, that is sleeves. If you are wearing short sleeves, um, buy yourself a pair of sleeves. Just do it. I mean, a lot, I see a lot, even a lot of my buddies who are great TIG welders, um, I see them all the time, you guys know who you are, uh, that they're welding and uh, they are not wearing any type of protection on their arms or on their hands. They'll wear a glove on their torch hand, which is strange, and no glove on their uh, non-torch hand. I'm assuming it's because they may struggle with feeding wire, which is fine. Um, a lot of people do, which I'm gonna go over that here in just a second, um, which is something that I've been trying out and it's actually really cool, but uh, use some sleeves, man. Put, just buy a jacket like this, right? It's not even FR or anything like that, but buy a jacket like this, leave it at the shop, leave it in your shop, don't wear it for anything else but this, or go buy yourself a, a you know, an actual weld jacket uh, and leave it at the shop. I know it's annoying and you're just trying to get some stuff done, 
but put the freaking jacket on, man. You do not want to burn your skin like that. There is no excuse. Don't say, oh, well, once I burn and I get a tan, I'll be fine. No, no, no. That's bad. You don't want that. Don't do that. Just don't do it. I'm here for you. Help me, help you, help you, help me. You know what I'm saying? Just don't do it, man. Get some sleeves. Wear a jacket. Whatever. Anyway, moving on to the next subject. Next subject, guys, is cleaning your material and your filler rods. Gotta clean all of it. You don't clean all of it, you're gonna be struggling with contamination in your welding the entire time you are trying to TIG weld. Please, take my advice, it sucks. Just clean your parts, over clean it. They can never be too clean. You can clean the crap out of them, especially with aluminum. Like don't, don't clean your aluminum and then leave it overnight and then come back and weld the next day and be like, man, why is my aluminum welding like shit? It's because you need to clean it again. You can't just clean it once. Clean, clean, clean. You always wanna have clean material, clean filler rod, clean tungsten, clean torch. I mean, this stuff matters, man. Even your gas lens, if you, let's say you dipped your tungsten in on accident or something and you had that material spit back into your torch. If you fried up that gas lens and you have a bunch of stuff up in that gas lens, does it make a huge difference? Probably not but you wanna keep that stuff clean. The cleaner it is, the better your welding is going to be and the faster you are going to progress. So, with that being said, I've taken out a couple of things that I recommend while trying to keep your parts clean and your uh, filler rod clean uh, while you're welding. So, number one, acetone. Go buy yourself some acetone. You could use it right out of the jug, just like this. This is how I used it for years. Um, this is what I use to clean everything. I clean my filler rod with it and I clean my material with it. Uh, you can use other stuff. Um, dechlorinated, brake clean, uh, mineral spirits I think you can use. I think it leaves an oil, so probably not, but acetone is number one. Use acetone, it's the best. You can um, buy this at any hardware store. So go get yourself some acetone. What I did personally to uh, make it a little bit easier to use acetone is I got one of these squirt bottles off of Amazon. Link will be in the description for most of this stuff, not all of it, but most of this stuff will be a uh, link in the description. Click the link if you guys wanna get something like this. Uh, super cheap, I got this bottle and this bottle off of Amazon for $7. It's $7, guys. $7 and this makes your life a million times easier, especially with cleaning your parts. Uh, so what you do is, instead of having to pop the lid off that thing all the time and then pop it back on because you need something to pry that cap open, um, I use this. This is awesome. You just squirt it and acetone comes out. It's great. Um, I was using paper towels for a long time. That's great. You can use paper towels. There is a problem with paper towels. Number one, uh, tons of lint. You get lint paper scuffs, things all over your weld material. Then basically you're wiping it off with your acetone rag, then you have to take another paper towel to wipe off all of the lint from your previous paper towel. Crap, it works, but crap. And number two, you're wasting paper towels. Don't do it, it's annoying. Paper towels are expensive. We have a shortage of that crap right now for some reason, but they're expensive in the grand scheme of things. Especially when you could spend $10 and get a 10 pack of lint-free rags. Uh, these are lint-free microfiber ta uh, rags that are specifically in my toolbox for cleaning my material. Um, I was using paper towels for years. Uh, I kind of, I recently just stopped using paper towels, but you waste paper towels so fast and it's annoying. So I say uh, away with paper towels and say hello to lint-free microfiber rags. These are great for numerous reasons. Again, lint-free, there's no lint. Now, if you have sharp edges and stuff on your parts, make sure you clean up your sharp edges because if you do wipe it with something like this, you may tear the rag and leave you know, a string or something like that on it, but for the most part, these are lint-free. Uh, number two, the great thing about them is again, it was $10 for a 10 pack and I can wash these. So once they are disgusting and gross, which I use one rag for one specific type of metal, so like this would be an aluminum rag and I have stainless and, and, and a steel rag, and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, you can wash them when you're done though, um, which is great. So they'll last you a long time. Now eventually the acetone is going to eat away 
um, at these rags or wiping over sharp material will eventually rip holes in them so you will have to replace them but again it's ten dollars for a ten pack i got these off amazon super cheap i think they were ten dollars they might have been 12 bucks whatever either way they're cheap so you can buy a 10 pack of these and have them for a long time because you can wash them and reuse them so big recommendation here another recommendation for your cleaning supplies would be gloves you want to use gloves because you're using acetone acetone from my understanding can kill nerve endings in your hands and etc etc i've seen people just soak their hands in the crap you don't want to do that it's bad for your skin so just use some gloves um, get a good set of gloves uh, i don't like latex gloves so i buy these um, i get them from amazon as well i will put a link in the description for these not that it matters but they're cheap and there's like a million gloves in here. So um, I use them for everything too. Um, detailing the cars, I use these. Uh, working on anything super greasy, I use these. Welding, I use these. So these are great. Also get the size that fits your hand. Um, get a good size that's not going to rip and a good size that's not going to just get stuck on everything. Uh, because when they fit right, you can use, put these gloves on, uh, squirt some acetone into your rag, clean your part, uh, and then you could put your TIG gloves right over your top of your latex gloves and not have to continue to reuse uh, or um, continue to get new gloves every time you need to go clean apart. So it's huge to uh, have some good um, latex or uh, nitrile or whatever gloves, uh, these ones. Um, it's good to have these uh, on hand and in your toolbox, especially for good clean TIG welding. Now, uh, another thing that I recommend for cleaning is dedicated scotch Brite pads for uh, different steels that you're welding. Do not use the same scotch Brite pad on the same materials. Again, I'm giving you, I'm making this video just to try and help you get better results so you can continue to progress further uh, in your TIG welding journey. Um, so when you're trying to TIG weld, a lot of the times people are just, they're, they're basically fighting bad prep work and um, when you have good prep work, it makes learning to TIG weld so much easier. So just take the time, create the habits now, and do good prep work for the material you are welding on. That's where these scotch Brite pads come in. Not so pro pro tip, you could go to the cleaning section of any hardware store and buy these same exact uh, scotch Brite scuff pads that you can buy in the paint section for like half the price. These green ones, for example, are the most common. Uh, you can get these scuff pads in the cleaning section. It comes in like a six or an eight pack for like $5 or something like that. And then if you go to the paint section, you only get two for $6. So that's a pro tip. And then, or not so pro pro tip. And then another not so pro pro tip is these come in sheets. Uh, meaning these two pieces right here were once one piece. I cut them in half and now you have two scuff pads. So that's what I do for these. I do it for the red ones as well. Uh, which you could also buy in the cleaning section of your local hardware store and save some money. Uh, and then another thing I do, you don't have to do it. I do it just because I'm a little weird like that is I put them all in their own plastic bag and I label what they are for. These are for steel. So which I take these out when I'm welding steel, clean my steel with them and put them back in the bag. You can reuse them a couple times. Um, you can even clean them out with a little bit of acetone sometimes, but you are gonna chew through these. These are gonna be another consumable of your welding journey, but uh, if you keep them in bags, uh, it makes uh, having clean material and knowing what material you're working on that much easier. So just put them in the bags, it's easier. Now we're going to move on to the third category of things that I personally think will make your TIG welding that much better. Number tres is the TIG welding calculator. Now, these uh, weld setting calculators are great. This is a paper one. I've had this for years, literally years. Um, basically what it is, uh, I'll try and show you on camera. So you see this black line down here. Um, you can pick anything right here, right on the front. It says aluminum, uh, magnesium, titanium. If I'm welding, let's say eighth inch aluminum and I'm doing a butt joint, it'll have joints right here. You slide that black line up to the butt joint and then it is going to show you, I'm sorry. This one's a little worn out, so please forgive me, but then it is going to show you your tungsten electrode diameter, your cup orifice, your filler rod, and the amps that Miller recommends that you use. Um, 
as well as the type of gas, the flow rate, um, et cetera, et cetera, and how fast you should be moving, which is hard to calculate by hand. But uh, these things are great to get you in the general ballpark of how to set up your machine to weld the material that you were trying to weld on. Uh, it would also make it a much easier for you to memorize uh, around what amperage something welds at. So like, let's say if you're gonna weld some steel, you're like, oh man, last time I welded that, it welded great at 100 amps. So you set your machine to 100 amps and you run it. So it'll get you in that ballpark of getting comfortable with what you're welding, how to weld it, and where to set your machine. If you are not ancient and you, <laughs> you do not want to use a paper calculator, um, you can get an app. Miller has an app for weld settings. Um, the great thing about the app too is it also gives you a big rundown on gas type, why you use that type of gas, um, what you can expect, art characteristics, etc., etc. The apps are great. There's plenty of them out there. Get one. It's great. It, it'll help you. Um, you can also use most machines will come with a uh, troubleshoot guide or whatever. And uh, you can check your troubleshoot guide, um, check the recommendations of the machine company that you have. They might have some recommended parameters for your machine, depending on what you are welding. Those are great. Get one, check it out. It's great, awesome, super cool. Next, number four. <laughs> number four is going to be slightly controversial. People might not like what I'm about to show you. And I honestly was a little bit of a hater of these things when I first seen them kind of, they've been out for a long time, don't get me wrong, but when I first started seeing people uh, use them, I was kind of like, man, it's a little lame, huh? Like, whatever. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a chance. Uh, I don't want to be one of those people that just shits on something as soon as you see it. Um, but I went ahead and bought one and I've been using it. I'm going to tell you something. They're awesome. They're great. They're... They're super cool. So what it is, is a TIG rod filler pen. Now, a lot of people, like I said, are going to hate on this. And do I think that you should learn how to fill a uh, filler rod by hand? Yes and no. Here's the reason why I say yes and no. Yes, because it's a good skill for you to have. If you have one of these, right, and you're using it, let's say it breaks, um, and then you don't have another one. Well, if you don't have another one and you still have to weld all day at your job or you're in your own shop and whatever and you're trying to weld but you don't know how to fill a filler rod and you only can use one of these that's where you're going to be in trouble granted even if you can't fill a filler rod and you can only let's say choke far up on the filler wire and you dab it like this until you run all the way out here and then you have to stop welding that's fine but you need to learn how to judge distance with your hands and do it with your hands before, not, I wouldn't say before, but uh, basically in conjunction with using one of these. Um, now, the cool thing about, actually I'm gonna use this. Uh, the cool thing about using one of these things is it is so user friendly that it's like, it's really hard to mess it up. But, uh, and actually to reverse a little bit, the, the no um, for this is because Again, the old heads out there, this is no offense to you guys, but you guys need to move on and grow with the industry. Um, you guys can't stay in the in the background and say, oh, you're not a real TIG welder if you can't fill a filler rod with your fingers. That's ridiculous. Um, there are plenty of people out there who fill their filler rod in ridiculous ways. Um, they've got stupid things, you know, rings that go on your finger and they do that. If that, if that works for them and their welds are coming out great, who are you to say anything about it? <laughs> it's time for you to grow up, move on with the world. There are better things out there um, and things that make the job significantly easier. Uh, and there's also a reason why in the last maybe decade or so, there are TIG welders out there that blow away the welders of previous generations. Not all of them, but there's a reason why, because these guys are adapting with the new technology that's coming out, the new machines, the new torches, the new gas cups, the new... Uh, the new uh, tungsten, everything, the new filler wire. They are adapting with what's coming out and you aren't. Do not do that to yourself. Don't be one of those haters that sits on the internet and says, oh, don't use one of those, you're not a real welder. No, you're a real welder if you use one of these, it's fine. But uh, with that being said, like I said, try to learn both. Um, if you're gonna start out and you, you're just struggling with it and you just wanna figure out how to follow the puddle, how to get a good puddle going, how to 
uh, run that puddle down your part and you don't want to focus on the feeding of filler wire right now, get one of these. It's $25 or 20 bucks um, and it will save you a ton of time and a ton of headache uh, with your TIG welding journey. So, show you how it works really quick. These things are pretty sweet. I don't know how you could possibly hate on them. But, it's a very simple mechanism. You feed it in, there's a little roller right here on the top with some O-rings in it, as you can see, and you literally just, <laughs> that's it. That's it, that's all you do. It's great, it's awesome. Well, and you can even back up if you need to, which you shouldn't ever need to, but you can back up if you need to. It's awesome. So you're sitting there freaking just, you know what I'm saying? These things are great, great. Go get one, link in the description. Again, I bought this one from Amazon. I wanted to try it out, they're great. I'm actually going to continue to use it just to piss people off, it's awesome. So, get one of these. TIG rod, p TIG filler pen. I think Blue Demon has one, it's called a dab pen or whatever. Um, they're great, man. All the, all the old heads out there that hate on this kind of stuff, don't let them bother you. Get this and then learn how to TIG weld, awesome lay them sick dimes, and then shit on those old guys who talk shit about you using one of these. It's great, go use it. Five. Five. Uh, I'm gonna say this one. I do have a little bit of a bonus, I think, but number five is a weld coupons kit. Now, um, weldmetals.com has a couple. There's a million out there now. I mean, I think I've seen a, a Instagram post, people are selling like tube notch kits and stuff like that and they're extremely inexpensive, man. I, I think weldmetals.com has one that is uh, $20 or something like that, and you get filler wire and coupons, and all of their coupons are cut and clean and then packaged into plastic and then shipped to you. It's great. I bought one, I, I bought one and I've had it for a while now because I'll whip out coupons to get the right kind of settings that I want for the vibe I'm going for. Like, let's say I go from AC and then I go to DC or whatever and I'm messing with stuff, I'll dial it back in on a coupon and then I'll go back to welding. But um, I bought one and they're great, man. Like, I might even have some still in here. I didn't buy like a kit. I just bought uh, specific steels. Um, I bought eighth inch. These are eighth inch steel plates. They come just like this in a uh, in a bag that they heat. Uh, I don't heat press or whatever you want to call it. They seal them up basically. They're all clean and ready to go. Wipe them off anyway, but they are clean and ready to go. Um, I got that, aluminum, um, tons of stainless. Uh, get one of these kits, these will make practicing a hell of a lot easier and you won't be wasting money on shitty steel from Home Depot that you're paying out the ass for. Don't do it, just, just buy one of these kits. This is what these guys do. Just buy one of these kits, it's easier. Oh, I mean, don't get me wrong, if you've got steel laying around the house, please go weld on that because you're gonna save money, but what the hell just happened? It just cut me off, anyway. What I was saying was, go get one of these kits. I mean, I'm not sponsored by World Metals or anything like that. I, I mean, I have 69 subscribers, so I'm not sponsored by anybody, but uh, this is just a good bargain. Uh, they have that kit out now where you can get filler steel and everything, uh, filler rod and, uh, and your steel that you're gonna be working on. It comes to you clean, it comes to you packaged. It's super cheap um, and worth it. And they've got puzzles that you can weld um, that are like those crazy like uh, infinity cubes and all that kind of jazz. Uh, but yeah, go uh, uh, go get one of those kits, they're great. Um, and like with that being said, about coupons, uh, if you can get your hands on free steel, like let's say that you, let's say you have a job and you're in the welding industry, maybe you're a helper or something like that. Uh, if you can get your hands on some free steel and they're not gonna you know, charge you for it or whatever, or give you a hard time about taking it, go ahead and take it. It's worth it, man. It's worth it. It's worth it to have it just shoved in the corner somewhere like I've got these from my last job oh, okay. I've got these um, from my last job I was repairing a uh, gate that was made out of um, what do they call it Maristar uh, or whatever that crappy flexible riveted together crap um, for some reason they took the job um, to fix it, so I had to make basically a whole other gate. Me and another person there had to fab up this gate, uh, and we had these uh, bare aluminum, uh, basically um, one inch or half inch or three quarter, whatever the fuck these are. 
Oh, wow. They're a little bit off. Let's just go ahead and say five eighths. <laughs> they're, uh, they're five eighths steel, or aluminum, I'm sorry. Aluminum uh, square stock, and I, I clean these up, I prep them. Again, um, I, don't, I probably have said this in my videos before, but these are aluminum. Um, anytime I can get some free aluminum, I get it, because aluminum is my kryptonite when it comes to TIG welding. It's still struggling with it, and I've been, I've been TIG welding for a few years now, and I still struggle with it. It's mainly the settings. Um, I just struggle with it. So you're not the only one out there struggling with it. But how do you get past that? You practice and you get a bunch of steel, uh, get a bunch of aluminum scraps, keep them in your in your toolbox or keep them in the corner of your garage. And whenever you get downtime and you're just like, man, I don't, I don't have much to do, weld some coupons. It is worth it. Do it. Yeah. Bonus round. This was five things, but I'm gonna do a number six. Number six is not needed for a new welder. In fact, I think it might be a crutch for some welders nowadays, but uh, it is worth it, I will tell you that. And what I'm referring to is gas lens kits. Now, the box did not come with this kit, but I will put a link for this specific kit um, in the description below. Basically what you get in a gas lens kit is you get uh, your gas lenses in all different sizes. Uh, you will get these right here. Uh, you will get your collets. Uh, you will also get your standard collet body, your gas diffuser, whatever you guys wanna call them. A bunch of people call them different things. Um, and then you get a whole mess of uh, cups, ceramic cups. Um, and you'll get <clears throat> some torch caps and things like that. The tungsten did not come with it. Uh, there are tons of videos out there on what tungsten you should be using. Um, I use 2% uh, lanthanated on pretty much everything, if you are wondering. But uh, I recommend going to get a gas lens kit if you are trying to take your TIG welding seriously. Go ahead and do it. Uh, it's worth it. Not necessarily like on aluminum. You don't really need it on aluminum. But like if you're welding, if you're like, man, I want to make some pretty stainless welds or some pretty steel welds. Uh, TIG welding, go ahead and get yourself a gas lens kit. It is worth it. Um, if you do, you don't have to get, you don't, you don't have to get, uh, you don't have to get a big kit like that. Um, if you're just doing a lot of steel and stainless work, um, you could get a kit like this, which again, I will put a description or a link in the description for this kit. It comes with a couple of different sizes, a couple of different caps. Um, and these are number 10, uh, Pyrex or glass cups, however you want to call it. Uh, they are the clear cups. This is a number 10 cup. It comes with O-rings and all kinds of fancy jazzamadu. Um, and they are cheap. So if you're doing a lot of stainless or you're just like, man, I don't care about anything else but welding really pretty stainless or welding really pretty steel or titanium or whatever you want to weld uh, besides aluminum, um, go ahead and pick you up one of these kits. It will make a world of difference. So what have we learned? We have learned a couple of things. I am by no means a professional. That's what we have learned, <laughs> number one. Number two, we have learned that prep is key. Buy some stuff to prep your steel. Important. But, and this is all just relative stuff, man. I mean, you guys might be killing it right out of the box, who knows, but I hope that what I recommended to you maybe hits home a little bit, and maybe you guys are like, man, shit, I, I have been struggling cleaning my parts, or I have been struggling with feeding my filler wire, my gloves are too big, etc., etc. I hope uh, any of the information I put out there has helped. This is a long video. I don't know how these people make these videos so quick, but um, regardless, uh, this was fun for me. I like shooting this kind of stuff because I love tools. Um, I love equipment. I love organizing equipment. Um, it's just like those things that I'm into. Um, so with that being said, uh, go check the links in the description if you like any of the stuff that I have recommended. Um, this stuff is awesome. I use it all the time, uh, especially here in the garage. But uh, we will get back to you with the next one. We're going to come out with some more drill press videos. I th honestly think I have them edited. Um, I think I'm going to re-edit them and just speed them up. They are really long and... Uh, trying not to lose everybody's attention here with these types of videos, but anyway, we are going to 
sign off on this one. Maybe we'll do another one here shortly. I have a couple more ideas of videos like this. But anyway, thanks for watching. You guys are awesome. Please like, subscribe, all that jiggity jazz. We'll see you on the next one. Peace, peace, deuce, deuce. I really appreciate you watching this vid. Thank you.